Well, we've been on this series called Dangerous Theology, and um, I know I wasn't here last weekend. Don't worry, I feel better. Recovered. Had the cold. And um, you know what? I, I wanted to save this message for the last one because when you experience what we're experiencing right now, when you have someone you love, someone close to you, and we make comments, which I'm sure many of you probably have, you know, no one's promised tomorrow. How many have ever heard that? No one's promised tomorrow. And maybe you've said it. Maybe you've heard someone say it. But it doesn't become a reality until it becomes a reality, is that no one is promised tomorrow. And we've been talking this message on dangerous theology because how many know that the gospel is dangerous? It'll change your life for one. It'll wreck you for good. It'll transform your life. It'll heal your life. It'll restore your life. It'll save your life. But then there's the flip side of a dangerous theology, and it's the theology that you come up with. It's the own belief system that you start carrying in your life. How many remember what I talked about two weeks ago when I said we all got BS in our life, right? Remember that? Everybody has a belief system. Everyone in this room. The question is, is does your belief system, does it align with God's word? Does it align with God's truth? And I showed this video, which was pretty graphic, because I wonder, when you think about Christianity in a global sense, I mean, we're not the only Christians in America, guys. There's Christians all over the world. But there is a difference of the Christians in Asia, Christians in Iran, Christians in India. There is a difference, and the difference is this, is that to become a Christian in this modern age, in any of those nations, and I want you to please listen today, engage. You already know the moment you receive Christ that your lifespan is anywhere from three weeks to three months. Three weeks to three months. As a person who, who may be a Muslim, someone who had been following a belief system or born into a religion, all their life, and all of a sudden, they meet the real Jesus, the raw and real Jesus. Jesus becomes more real than the very chair that you and I sit on most often or the chair you're sitting on right now. And then now they have this, this, this deep conviction. They have this deep desire to want to please God, to want to know God, to want to experience God in every possible level. I, I, I stopped and thought about this as I was preparing for the message. And I wonder how many of those Christians in India, Iran, Asia, I wonder how many of them, you know, think this. Man, those Christians in America, man, they, 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 they're my hero. Because I'm sure that they're experiencing the same persecution we're persecu being persecuted with. So, man, we might as well just keep going strong because if America, the, the, the country, the nation who is known to be Christian, if they can be, perse be persecuted for righteousness sake, then we can do it too. Are you hearing me? But how many know that 80% of America claims to be Christian? But there's only a very low percentage of how many actual, actually pick up their cross and follow him. Are you hearing me? So this isn't to be a, a downer message. This, is to, this isn't a message to put fear in you. This is a message to wake up the sleeping giant. And that sleeping giant is called you, me. And we see headlines every day. Like this stuff right here, we weren't trying to find video of things that happened in the last 10, 15 years. This is all fresh footage in the last two years. This is stuff that is happening right now. These are the headlines right now that we're experiencing in our country, in the world. And how many know that headlines is a big deal everywhere, you know, you watch on social media? I mean, have you ever been on Facebook and you read a little headline that says how to lose, you know, uh, 30 pounds in 15 days? And you may want to click on that headline, right? Because who doesn't want to lose 30 pounds in 15 days? You know, or how to get a six-pack in four days. You know, and it, like with, there's so many headlines that we see everywhere. And anything that draws your interest, you want to click on that bad boy because you want to know how to get a six-pack in four days. All of us do. 
But let me tell you something. How many know that God wants us to be the kind of church that rewrites the headlines of our nation? God wants us to rewrite those headlines because whether you know this or not, every single one of us right now, we have our own personal headline when it comes to people, when it comes to faith, when it comes to the church, when it comes to our family. For example, if I were to throw out a name, let's just say you have a guy or a girl named, let's say uh, you have a, a Jill at work or a Bob at work. Let's say those are real people that you know. Immediately, there's a headline that goes in that person, you know, with that, that that's attached to that name. Your headline's like either like they're crazy, I don't like them, they're jerks. You know, like we all got headlines, every single one of us. But what I love about God and him rewriting the headline of our life is I am so thankful that we serve a God who is so merciful, so graceful, so loving, so kind, that he wants to rewrite the headline of your life and my life too. Because maybe right now your headline is you're a wishy-washy Christian. Maybe your headline right now is you got one foot in the world and you got one foot in the church. Maybe your headline right now is you're always doubting God or you're always blaming God or you're still mad at God. Maybe that's your headline. But I love the fact that we serve a God who loves to rewrite every single headline in this room right now. God wants to, he wants to redeem us. He wants to restore us. God wants to reconcile us back in relationship back with the Father. That's the headline for heaven right now. Heaven is saying, big headline today, Sunday. I want all my kids to come back to the Father. That's God's headline. Can we give God a big hand clap for that? That's his headline. We have all kinds of bad headlines here on earth. In heaven, there's only one headline. I love you. I see you. I love you. I want you. I desire you. I forgive you. I grace you. I'll be your strength. I want to help you. That's heaven's headline this morning for you. And in our culture today, let me tell you, it's not easy being a Christian, is it? But it is possible. But it's not easy because there's such a watered-down gospel today. I'm going to give you homework. And I did this on purpose. I probably spent a few hours doing this. I started looking at every major influencer in the body of Christ right now. And I started looking at every sermon. Like just titles. And you know what I realized? And this is not to, to put down any minister because you know what? I love and respect all these ministers because God loves them. But this is, a, this is also a wake up for, you know, us, the church here in Santa Clarita. But if you notice every single message, and I, I encourage you, go do it. You're going to realize that just about every single sermon is about self-help. It's me, me, me. I, I, I. Me, me, me. Emotion, emotion, emo my emotions, my trauma. And listen, I'm not denying trauma. God's not denying trauma. God's not denying pain. But it's almost fashionist now to be a Christian and talk about trauma like it's something that you wear for fashion. Like it's almost like we've lost sense of God's divine power to deliver us, to set us free. Once again, I'm not downplaying pain, hurt, trauma. We all got a little bit of trauma, trust me, every single one of us in some way. But at what point do we come to that place where we start taking God's doctrine, where we start taking God's word for face value, and we start really taking that word and saying, you know what, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to exchange my life for God's truth. Because what's happening in America right now is we're exchanging God's truth for a whole bunch of lies. And then we're just, we're living in lie. We're lying with the lie. We're sleeping with the lie. We're coexisting with the lie. Read your Bible just in Romans. It says we exchange God's truth for the lies. And then you know what we do? Then we want to blame everybody for our lies. Then we want to blame God for our lies. 
Then we want to blame people for everything that we've experienced in this earth. When God is saying, hey, listen, I'm your Lord. I'm your Savior. I want to heal you. I want to restore you. I want a relationship with you. I want to redeem your life. And so you start seeing all this, this watered-down gospel that only, you know, talks about a, a gospel that fits your lifestyle, a gospel that fits your attitude, a gospel that fits your feelings. And how many know that, that if you really want to get down to the, the, the nitty-gritty of the gospel, the gospel is all about giving life away, amen? It's, it's about serving. It, it's, 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 not, it's not about, you know, what can the gospel do for me? It's what can I do for the gospel, amen? Because of what he did for me. And when you start having that mindset, you know what God's trying to do for every single one of us? When you finally know the gospel, when you finally know God's word, when you finally actually take the time to look into the Bible, into the word, into the scriptures for your own personal self, that's when you start living. Let me give you a quick acronym of live because I know that God wants you to live for him. Amen. Here's an acronym. Living in view of eternity. I want to talk about this. Because let me tell you something, nobody wants to think of the fact that there is a timeline and an expiration date for your life. Nobody wants to talk about that. See, I don't even know the time, the hour, the day, the year of my life. I pray I live a full life, but here's the truth. I'm not promised either. Are you hearing me? And the reason we don't think this way or the only time we start thinking about life is when life is lost. Then we start living in view of eternity. And so that's not a bad thing. You know, I think it's a good thing because it really wakes you up. And you start realizing, like, you know what, even this whole situation we're experiencing as a church, it's not about you. It's not about you. It's about a family's hurting who needs us right now. But it should ask the question about you now. Because here's what, here, here's the greatest plot of the enemy. Here it is. Do not, if you get anything out of today, get this. Here's the biggest plot of the enemy. The enemy gets you and I so focused on a world that is so big. And he makes eternity look so small. That's the trap of Satan. He makes you think like you're never going to die. Man, get it all while you can. Put it in the can. Sit on the can. Just, just take it all. Just lust for it. Just chase after it. Man, step people while you're chasing the dream. I said this a few weeks ago. Man, you better not be the person that's chasing the dream. The dream should be chasing you down. You don't chase anything. The blessings will overtake you, the Bible says. It didn't say that you will overtake the blessing. Let the blesser be blessing you, amen? Don't get to the place where you get so consumed. The enemy will just tell you, this world is forever. No, it ain't. Liar, liar. Pants on fire. No, it's not. No. Listen, the Bible says... That earth is short, but heaven is forever. And we have to start thinking about heaven. We have to start living in view of eternity. Because guess what? This whole wonderful world that we live in, that we all enjoy, okay, you're just passing by. I'm just passing by. Your citizenship is not on earth. It's in heaven. We're just, we're just passing by. We're just like, yo, what's up? And we're, we're gone. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be what? Present with God. Right? So once you leave this body, hey, it, you're... It is finished. And my, my desire is that we leave here today thinking this mindset like, you know, Pastor, I want to finish this race strong regardless of how many years. It's not about, oh, my God, I'm so scared. What if I die when I'm 45? What if I die when I'm 50? Stop thinking that way. God didn't give you that spirit of fear. He gave you a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. You should start thinking about, man, I got to start living in view of eternity. I got to get to work because the only thing I can take with me to heaven is souls. If you ever look at a hearse, you'll never find a U-Haul. You'll never see one. You'll never see a U-Haul in a hearse. It's hilarious, but it's true. Did you guys hear about the hearse that got stolen this week? What the? It's the world we live in. It's crazy. 
trying to lay the woman to rest. They're taking her on a joy ride. It's just like, man, I'm like, wow. Like, man, their people are just so callous. It's true. Everybody say living in view of eternity. See, it's prioritizing God in our now, not later. It's making him first now. It's seek first the kingdom of God now. And then all those things that you want, because how many know that God wants to bless you? How many know that God wants to give you the desires of your heart? But I want the desires of my heart that line up with God's desires of my heart, right? It's not just what I desire. You know, I listen, I desire a lot of things. But not everything I desire lines up with him. So it's knowing how to di- differentiate, okay, God, what, what do you want from me versus what do I want? And you better give it to me. If not, you're not God. So it's allowing where we are going to influence where we are right now. If you let, if you let where you are going influence you, I'm telling you, your life right now would be so much better. You don't have to live in fear. When you're living for right now, you're afraid of eternity. But if you're already living in view of eternity, if you already have a God perspective of eternity, let me tell you something, man. You live large and in charge while you're here on this earth. Like nothing shakes you, nothing moves. You're like, nah, man, I got things to do. I got places to go. I got people to meet. I got purpose to accomplish. You don't, you don't, but when you're living like this world is bigger than eternity, now we have a problem. Are you here? It's keeping an eternal perspective. And the reason, once again, that it's so hard is because the enemy will make you think that this world is bigger than eternity. No, it's not. It's not. Let's just talk about Noah real quick. Because obviously, being a Christian is not easy. You know why it's not easy? Because once, once you know this truth, like once you get to that place where you take God seriously, it's, it's almost like you have to do something about it now. It's like, like when you really, like when you've met the real Jesus, you can't shut your mouth anymore. You, it, I'm telling you, like when you've experienced the real Christ in your life, man, you talk different. You think different. You do different. You walk different. See, once, once you, you understand, once, once this word, this, this God, once you met Jesus and he actually, he means something to you beyond religion, beyond just going to church, you have to do something about it. That's why it sucks to know the truth and not enjoy your sin anymore. Try sinning while you know the truth. You know you're already wrong. And you know it don't even feel good. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's you don't, you know why? Because, and, and please don't get this wrong, but I, I, I believe in mentorship, coaches. Like, uh, that's good. Go do that. That's awesome. I have people that I respect. Let me tell you something. Get all the, get all the, uh, Get all the people you can that, hey, hold me accountable. Let's be accountable to each other. Every week we'll meet on Tuesday. We'll call each other. We'll hold each other accountable. And you know you're going to lie to your accountability partner. You already know that. Hey, you've been watching porn. Nah, man. You know why? Because you can say what you want. It's funny how, how we, we want man's accountability, but we won't be accountable to this word. Like, we'd rather have more accountability. Like, oh, keep me accountable. Listen, if you can't let this keep you accountable, how are you going to let him keep you accountable? How is that going to work? So, once again, don't leave here. Don't send me emails like, oh, my God, he doesn't believe in mentorship. That's not what I said. What I'm saying is, is that you think about Noah. Let's take a man. This man was someone who... Man, he, as a matter of fact, the title, the headline for Noah was, he was known as the preacher of righteousness. How many know that? That's what he was called. He was called in the Bible the preacher of righteousness. But you take someone like Noah and you see his story. We know that God is about to flood the earth and destroy it all. And he comes and he meets Noah and he starts having this conversation with Noah. And he tells Noah, hey, Noah, I want you to build me an ark, man. I want you to build me a boat. 
And the reason I want you to build me a boat is because I'm going to flood the earth. I mean, just please, like, just think about this. Noah, first of all, didn't even know what a boat is. There was no boats that existed then. So he's, God's telling Noah to build him something that does not exist, that has never been heard of. I'm sure he even said, what's a boat? You know, then he tells them, and I'm going to flood the earth. Rain is coming. What is rain? It never had rained. And one thing that you can learn about Noah is that Noah is willing to take God's word and not, and not allow his experience to determine whether or not he was going to take God's word at face value. In other words, what I'm trying to say with you, and I'll get this to you as a point, is that many things in God's word will contradict your experience. See, if you're going to take God's word, you can't be that person that says, well, I've never experienced this before, so unless I understand it, I can't really take God's word forward at face value. No, listen, when God wants to do something, when God wants to do a miracle, when God wants to do something creative in your life, he's always going to ask you to do something that you lack experience in. Always. I mean, then what's the purpose of faith? Listen, God rather have people with no experience rather than people who claim they got experience. Because I have seen the people that have most experience in God's word are the people that hardly do anything for God. And I have noticed the people that hardly have experience of God's word end up doing the most for God. So call me an unexperienced pastor. How many want to be in that crowd right there, right? Like, Lord, I'm unexperienced. Just tell me what you want. See, and the problem is this, is that Noah is asked by, by God to build this boat, this ark, because it's going to flood the earth. Now, mind you, by day, him and his family were building the boat. By night, so he was focused building for God. Boom, with his family, building, building, building. By night, he was the preacher of righteousness. He was going into town, and he was preaching the most amazing sermon series. You know what his sermon series was? Get ready. It's raining. That was his sermon series. That, that was every, he'd go at night, preach your righteousness. Get ready. Get ready. The rain's coming. Get ready. The rain's coming. Get ready. The rain's coming. He did this for 120 years, and they saw him as a fool. 120 years, he preached the same message. And they, and listen, the reason they thought he was a fool is because nobody believed him. And what I'm sharing with you today, you're going to either come to the place where you're either believing this or you don't believe this either. But how many know that we are a word church? We're looking at the scriptures. When, if you want to feel good and tickle me, Elmo, okay, go watch a podcast or something. But if you're here because you want to grow, because you want to draw closer to God, because you actually want to know the real Jesus, I'm telling you, man, these are the last days where you start seeing all kinds of crazy stuff. And I'm going to prove it to you in a second here. But I love this because so you have Noah who's, who's willing to preach this message of it's going to rain for 120 years. And you look at your own life, you have to ask yourself, man, have I even told someone about Jesus 120 times? We're talking about 120 years. He preached the same message. Get ready. It's going to rain. Get ready. The rain is coming. Get ready. The rain is going to flood the earth. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. You see, in Noah's time, he was constantly being, he was being pushed back. There was constant persecution. There was this, this, this going against the grain. He kept going against, against culture. He kept going against the standard of the world. He kept going against their belief system, how they thought. But how many know that if you and I are not careful, you can become that person, that Christian, that you're going to allow the culture to go ahead and put you at ease and comfortable and safe and, and then realize that, wow, I don't even know what doctrine I'm living anymore. Because the truth, let me, let me tell you something. When Jesus said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free, man, he don't play around. He wants to make us free. But we got to take this. 
And we gotta, we got to not only take this gospel, but we have to believe this gospel. We have to live this gospel. We have to speak this gospel. We have to do this gospel. It's not enough just to go to church, sit in some very comfortable chairs, enjoy great worship music, come and experience all the activities that we do here at Elevate Church at the expense of you never grow up. Never. That's why next week's series, it's called Get Up. And grow up. You guys ready for that one? That one's going to be fun. So just relax to the Sunday. You're, you know, just take it in for right now. <laughs> I know some of you look a little nervous right now. You're like, oh, my God, are we going to hell? No, you're not going to hell, man. <laughs> Listen, your life is fragile. Your body is temporary. You can't, you can't live like this is going forever. You can't can't think like if you keep thinking like I'm good I'm good when you think you're good you're not good no I just say no I'm not good I need to get I need to get good with God I need to get right with God amen and it's not out of fear it's out of reverence it's out of there's there's like this this conviction like I gotta respect I gotta fear God I gotta respect I gotta get a healthy a healthy respect for God. I have to have a healthy relationship with God. Not a fear that, that puts me in a place that's going to, you know, make me feel like, like God is mad at me or God wants to destroy me. Here, here's the truth. There's, there's two major events that we already see in the Bible as, as, as prophecies. These are the two main dogs. Now, I know there's over 5,000 prophecies, but two of the main ones are the ones that we should really focus on. Go ahead and read all the other ones, but these are the two. The first one is that the, you had the prophets say, Jesus is coming. And we know that Jesus came, and as Isaiah the prophet, as Eli, all these different prophets, Moses, all of them, as they all spoke about the coming of Christ, let me tell you something. They kept warning people, he's coming. And did Christ come? Oh, yes, he did. Yes, he did. As a matter of fact, if you study the scriptures, there are 300 Bible verses of Jesus coming. 100 of the Bible verses are in the Old Testament where the prophet said, 100 verses said, Christ is coming. And this is what Isaiah said, you know, when you start reading the verses of Isaiah, he says that the spirit of the Lord is upon him. And that's when he already started pointing to Jesus. Well, guess what? The other 200 verses are in the New Testament that Jesus is coming back for you and me. He's coming back. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to live a full 120 years, right, without a cane or a wheelchair, right? You know, I want to be able to be up here and have my kids still pulling me off the stage like, get off, Dad, come on, let us preach now. <laughs> I'll give it to them when they're 100 or something, you know, I don't know. No, but, but you want to live, you want to live, listen, you want to live, you want to live in view of eternity, you want to live for God, you know, you want to be able to, to finish this race, but when you, when you think about the Lord's return, I'm telling you, it, it's, it's almost like you start getting the reality, the understanding, and the readiness of knowing that Christ is coming back soon for me. And when you know that he's coming back soon for you, I'm telling you, it, it changes how you live. It changes how you say things. It changes how you do. It does. It has to change you inside. If it hasn't changed you inside, then you have to ask yourself, maybe I don't know the real Jesus yet. Maybe you don't. And that's not Listen, it doesn't make you bad. You know what it does? It makes you a human in need of a savior, right? And aren't you glad that today, today while you're sitting in this service, by the time I'm done with this message, I'm going to give you an invitation to say, hey, listen, now if you want to come meet the real Jesus, come and meet the real Jesus today. But let me first tell you how we know that he's coming back because, uh, like I said, 300 verses, but I want to just kind of show you a few verses. Look at Luke chapter 12, verse 40 on the screen quickly. Let's get out of here. Look, he says, you also must be what? Ready. You must be what? Ready. Ask your neighbor. Are you ready? ready? If they look at you weird, ask them again. <laughs> but, but listen, but it's not you must be ready. You must be ready all the time. Come on, God is good. All the time. And all the time? For all them old church people. Folk. <laughs> oh, he good. All the time. 
You also must be ready all the time. For the Son of Man will come when you what? Least expect. See, some of us, we think that at the highest point of our life, man, listen, let's just say all the money's coming in, all the bills are paid. Man, you're thinking like, man, life is awesome. Life is starting out and Jesus can come back right there. He says, when you least expect it, I'll show up. See, some of us, we have a, a word that we like to call timeline. And we like to fit God in our timeline. And we start planning everything within our timeline. Not realizing that God is time. And, and we become so impatient in what God does in this timeline. But the only thing that God is asking of us is to be ready at all the time. That means I'm ready today if God comes back today. That means I'm ready tomorrow. Think about it. The disciples, man, when they were asking Jesus, like, Jesus, I tell me, hey, y'all, uh, I'm leaving. You're staying. But I'm coming back for you. Not even the next breath. You know what Peter says? When are you coming back? It's like, dude, let me leave first. <laughs> you know why? Because they lived like he was coming back right now. And then when he left, all they preached was this. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus, man, they were the Noah of their generation. Noah preached rain is coming. The disciples preach, Jesus is returning. He's coming back for you, amen? He's coming back for you. He's coming back for me. And I pray that when he opens that eastern sky, I pray that every single one of us, like a little batch of eggs, will all be right in there, ready to be taken on the first batch home, amen? amen. I don't want to be, I, listen, I want to be in that batch. I should have brought an illustration, a box of eggs, and be like, this is you. Get in the box, amen? He said, be ready. At all time. All the time. Nobody's going to know the day, the hour. Not even Jesus knows the day or the hour. Not even the angels of God knows the day or the hour. The only one who knows the day or the hour is God the Father. Amen. And But he's coming when? When you least expect it. When's he coming? It can be a week or 30 years from now. But he's coming. How do you think your life would be if you started living in view of eternity? I think your decisions would be different. I think you wouldn't be making you decisions. You'd be making God decisions. I think your conviction of who you would choose to be in your life would be more valuable, right? Instead of just getting hooked up, linked up with anybody and everybody, only to be hurt for another 3, 5, 10, 15, 20 years. When you live in view of eternity, you think different. You know, you know how you think? I ain't wasting my time with that. Stop wasting your influence. Stop wasting it. Stop wasting all that influence that God has put in you by the Holy Spirit inside of you and start saying to yourself, no, God has called me. I have only one life. That means I only get one chance. That means I can't waste this life. I got to do something with this life. I can't keep making excuses for my attitude. I can't keep trying to fit this gospel to my life, lifestyle, my, my ideologies, my ideas. No, I have to live. I have to preach this gospel. Amen. Now, some of you may think I'm a fool for preaching this. That's okay. Some of you may think, man, you're radical. That's all right. If that's the headline for today, then so be it. See, because until you stop caring about the headlines, you'll never live for Jesus. As a matter of fact, when Jesus died for you on the cross, he wrote the biggest headline that still preaches 2,000 years later and that headline is it is finished it is finished it is finished all you have to do is line yourself up with him and it is finished pain I'll finish it suffering come on come to the it is finished 
renew, come to the it is finished. How many know that Jesus already finished everything that you're experiencing right now? He's already covered it with his blood. His body was already broken for your sickness and your diseases. It is finished in Jesus. We need to come back to that headline, to the it is finished. The one who looked down on you and me on the cross and he said, man, it was for the joy that was set before me, you, that I endured the cross. It is finished. I finished it for you. The devil is under my feet. I have destroyed every single work of the enemy so that you can live. The headline, it is finished. That's what God wants for every single one of us. All right, hurry up. Uh, John 14, 3, let's go. <clears throat> you guys have your communion? Okay, get those bad boys out real quick. Look at John 14, 3. Look up on the screen. It says, when everything is ready, I will come and get you. When what is ready? I will what? I'm going to come get you. He's coming for you, Rodolfo. He's going to come get you. Isn't that cool? I will come get you so that you will always be with me where what? Where I am. He's obviously not on earth, right? He's in heaven. Let's read another one. Look at, the, look at what the Apostle Paul says. 1 Thessalonians 4.15, he says, according to the Lord's word. According to whose word? Lord. See, stop waiting for an experience. Okay, I need to understand God's word. Then I'll believe it. No, let me tell you something. If you can't believe God's word now, you won't believe God's word then. So Paul says, according to God's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not perceive those who have fallen asleep. Amen? Let me give you another one. This is James, the brother of Jesus, the little brother. He says, you too. He says, must be patient. Take courage. Establish your heart. For the coming of the Lord is what? Is near. Listen, today, you know what sucks? Is that you heard the truth. You're like, dang, why did we come to this service? No, you should be thankful you came, you came to the right service today. The Lord is near. And, and if y'all, how many know me pretty well already here? I, I'm, not, I'm not one of them, you know, fire and brimstone kind of preachers, am I? I'm not. But I'll tell you the truth. I'll tell you the truth. So I'm not here to put a fear message on you. No, I, this, is, this is an exciting message. It's like, dang, we get to get it together today. Come on, somebody. Hey, man, we get to get this thing straight. Come on, God says, I'll make crooked places straight again. Come on, whatever looks crooked, your nose is crooked, your feet are crooked. I don't know what's crooked, but he'll make it straight. <laughs> Second Peter 3, verse 3 through 4 says this. Most importantly, I want to remind you that, that in the last days, scoffers will come. Who will come? Scoffers. Mocking what? The truth. And following their own what? That's when you know. That's when you know that, that man, when I'm living, when you start getting persecuted, dude, you should be excited. Like, when they start calling you, like, the Jesus freak of work, man, you should be like, yeah. If they ain't calling you names, I don't know who you're living for. Because I've been called every name in this city. And listen, but it's all for righteousness sake. Ah, he's extreme. Good. Extreme for the Lord. Ah, he's too strong. Good. I'm strong in Jesus. Ah, he doesn't have a filter. Praise God. Neither do you. Yeah, you'll just say it. Heck yeah. I want to remind you that in the last days, scoffers will come mocking the truth and following their own desires. They will say, what happened to the promise that Jesus is coming again? Where's your Jesus now? Oh, oh, you guys are going through pain, church. Where's your Jesus? I thought he's supposed to protect you. Oh, I thought he's supposed to be there for you. See, the ignorant person is the one who thinks that just because you're a Christian that you'll never experience any turmoil, pain, suffering on this earth. That's the ignorant Christian. That's the ignorant person. Jesus was very clear. On this earth, you will experience trial and tribulation, but be of good cheer because I have overcome this world, and this is what overcomes the world, your faith, your faith. So they can call you foolish. If they're calling you foolish now, man, you are definitely, definitely the no of this generation. 
You're building, listen, you're, you're, you're not building an ark. But you know what your message is in 2020? The rain is coming. It's the rain of his love. It's the reign of his peace. It's the reign of his joy. It's the reign of his strength. And guess what? And tell him, and God's going to flood your life like nobody's business. Amen. He's going to flood you with transformation and change. Ah, let's just finish this bad boy. Let's get out of here. Last one, Revelation 22, 12. Let's look on the screen. He says, look, this is Jesus. John wraps it all up. John wraps it all up. This is Jesus in his own words saying this to every single one of us. Look. I'm coming soon. I bring my rewards with me. I'm going to know that when God comes back, when Jesus, there's going to be a ceremony. He says, my rewards are with me for each person for what they have done. That's why I'm always telling you here, if you don't serve, you what? You swerve. We need, we need the body. We need each other. You need a church family. You got to stop trying to live your way. Tell me how that's working. I'll tell you how it's working. You're unhappy. You're unsatisfied. Come on. The only thing that makes you happy maybe is a little party, a little, you know, a little drinky drinky, a little smoky smoky, right? Right? It's temporary. Yeah, it feels good. But at the end of it, what's inside of it? It's empty. It's empty. There's nothing there. You know why? Because the only one that can fulfill you, the only one that can heal you, the only one that can make you feel like you are worth anything is your creator. It's God the Father. And that's why his name is Father. Because for us who have daddy issues, God the Father loved you and me so much. He said, hey, listen, don't worry about your earthly father, your earthly mother. I'm your daddy and I'm your mama. I love you. I want you. Amen.